After meeting with the police, council officials determined to withdraw from the scene if the delegation met with resistance. When Harry Collinson arrived at the bungalow on the 20th of June, he had planning law on his side. Albert Dryden didn't know it, but the last-ditch appeal was invalid. A letter from the Department of the Environment informing him of their final ruling arrived the day after the shootings. After his arrest, Albert Dryden enjoyed the kind of support reserved for heroes. His friends still say he was one man against the system. They've collected thousands of names on a petition demanding a public inquiry into the way Derwent Side Council handled the affair. There are questions that have to be answered, they just do have to answer them. And they're talking about an internal inquiry, but I can't see how they can actually investigate themselves. So therefore, we would like to see an independent public inquiry. And it's not just, as the council would like to think, it's a small minority in the area, it isn't. There are 3,000 plus names in here to say it isn't. And these people wouldn't sign this if they didn't feel strongly about it. So you can say that every person in here wants an independent public inquiry. Derwentside Council is currently preparing a report about the incident which may be released to the public. It will be scrutinised by other councils who must work to the same planning guidelines. We are now reviewing our guidance uh, to members when they have, are facing circumstances like this. And one of the things which we are saying now very, very clearly to members, when this is one of the lessons we've learned, I think, is that if you perceive a confrontational situation arising, which looks as though it might move to, to violence, or potentially could move to violence, back off. Don't push forward at that moment and insist on everything being done by the book. Back off and find a better a uh, less exposed way to deal with the situation, deal with the individual. Council officials across the country have been shaken by the killing of Harry Collinson. His death has brought a new, dangerous dimension to public service and has raised new questions about the statutory planning procedure in Britain. There are questions too for Durham Police. Albert Dryden had made threats six days before the shootings, but they were apparently disregarded. And why didn't the police know about Dryden's guns and his capacity to kill? Beverly Thompson again. This is the weaponry the police uncovered, an assortment of guns and ammunition collected and assembled by Albert Dryden. Even the homemade guns, though technically primitive, are each capable of being fired. Ballistics were his passion. As a schoolboy, he shunned football and cricket and played alone with his guns. He also began to experiment with homemade rockets. When we were younger, just, I'd say about seven, 16, 17, we used to, uh, used to fill on with rockets. He used to be called the Rocket, rocket King then. And uh, we used to send, build rockets and send them up into the sky. But he got stuff for that because the RAF were fending on their radar and they were trying to figure out what was the UFO was. But uh, he got that stopped. But it wasn't until 1957 that he came to the attention of the police. He was 17 when he applied for and was granted a firearm certificate for a rifle. Four years later, the police searched his home after a tip-off and discovered materials for making ammunition. The certificate was cancelled. At his home in Priestman's Avenue concert, an enterprising Albert Dryden continued to apply basic chemistry to making rockets. He became part of Derwentside folklore. These uh, were tubes about three inches in diameter and about three feet in length uh, that he filled with a, a propellant made from easily available household ingredients. Uh, they weren't very sophisticated. His uh, ingredient for lighting them were uh, match heads. Dryden applied for another firearm certificate in 1983. He told the police he wanted to use the gun for deer stalking. It was denied again. Yet all this time he was building up a formidable arsenal. The police maintained that they had no knowledge about it. Unfortunately, it is uh, a reasonably regular occurrence where we do find people unlawfully in possession of uh, firearms. In this instance, people have indicated that they knew Dryden had firearms, but no one at all approached the police to uh, tell them of this. And I would appeal to anyone who knows of anyone in possession of firearms to 
to contact their local police and they will ensure the necessary action is taken. Unfortunately, in this instance, it didn't occur. Concert police prided themselves on their friendly relations with Albert Dryden. They believed he was a man they could reason with, but did they misjudge him? The connection certainly wasn't there uh, with firearms to justify us uh, going to apply for a warrant. Uh, had we had any serious concern, uh, then we would have applied for a warrant to search his property, and we didn't have that. Uh, it was well known to the local police, amiable, eccentric. Dryden made repeated threats against the council. Some journalists thought they were serious enough to report to the police. And he left the doorstep where we were talking, came back with a large, I'm not a, a guns man, but what he said was a, a spent machine gun bullet. It was certainly about three or four inches long, brass. Said he'd been up on the moors practicing with it and that he had the, the weapons to cut through a JCB and to cut through the driver with it. The police's reaction uh, were, to, were to say to our reporter, well, we'll, uh, we'll take it into consideration. But uh, as it uh, transpired, uh, they don't appear not to have taken it so seriously because they said he had no record of, uh, of having had firearms previously or no record of violence. On the day of the shooting, three officers were dispatched to the bungalow. The police still believed they were dealing only with a potential breach of the peace. Just four miles from Buttsfield, the police had stationed their tactical arms unit in a force rapid response vehicle. Senior officers maintain that on the 20th of June 1991, the proximity of the squad had nothing to do with Albert Dryden's record. Just about literally every other day, uh, we have armed response vehicles, two in the county. Uh, we locate them if we have an incident that could potentially, the unusual could happen. We will locate it in the area of that incident uh, as opposed to being 30, 40 mile away. But I may add, it's just in case. If there had been any possibility or information received by the police that Albert Dryden was armed or did possess firearms, we would not have allowed the uh, operation to take place. We'd obtained search warrants and searched his premises. Police deny they misjudged the Dryden affair and say it proves it's simply impossible to plan for the unexpected or in this case, the unimaginable. This evening, Tony Belmont, the Look North reporter injured in the Buttsfield shootings, gave his reaction to the verdict. It's been a long nine months. My family have suffered, I've suffered. Um, I have a physical injury to show for the events of June the 20th. In a way, part of me says that I'm relieved that justice has been done and the man who committed murder on the day that I went to cover what should have been a run-of-the-mill story is going to get life in prison. But there is part of me which uh, has a little bit of sympathy for Albert Dryden, and I only hope that he gets the, the treatment that he, that, that he obviously needs.